Right, you can see what I'm doing there. It's being done with an obvious purpose. Heaven knows what I was doing, but the point is, there's a sense of purpose about it, like you don't see in most of the kids, you see digging on the beach. That's the poke teacups again. A large number of units, identical is what you need to do that. Snow, snow, I love snow. And I love mathematical shapes, geometry, polyhedra, and you can also see down there are some sparagraph patterns. That's a toy children had in the 1960s, which is used, it uses cogwheels to draw patterns. You put a pen in a hole in a cogwheel and make a pattern. So, as an adult, how did I get into land drawing? What gave me the idea? I get asked this a lot, has to be answered. And the answer is people have been doing it for thousands of years and there's lots of it in England. That's the oldest one. They think that's at least 2,000 years old, possibly 3,000 years old. There's some more recent ones. That's quite a good one. Temptation, abstinence, poor eyesight, and punishment. <laughs> it's been vandalized once or twice, apparently. Someone probably tried to put a condom on it, never mind. <laughs> There's the Nazca lines. More prehistoric land art drawings with more drawings on top of the first lot of drawings and still yet more drawings. That gave me the idea there was once a plan to turn that into a railway locomotive apparently when the railway was driven near there. So, one day after skiing I thought, can't be bothered to go for a run today, let's make a pattern in the lake. So I walked into the centre of the lake got my compass, and I walked out from the lake, five compass bearings into the centre, and I put five things down around the centre, sort of like that. I then joined them up like that, and I ended up with a five-pointed star made on the surface of this snow-covered frozen lake with my boots. I then filled it in and put some more circular areas around the edge. And that is how the whole concept of snow drawing actually got started. It took a while to get going, because at that time I was quite seriously into competitive orienteering, and I regarded it as a low-grade physical activity when really one should be running rather than plodding around on a frozen lake. Well, I made a few now and then, started taking a bit of time out from skiing to do it, and... Oh, get this stuff out of the way, please. Put it under my seat. Okay. And I was amazed at how good it looked. It was a complete and utter surprise. Something about the way the light focuses on the not quite accurate pattern, but sort of regular, but not too regular pattern that results from walking around in snowshoes. I'm not even sure I even bought snowshoes when I did that one. Is that snowshoe footprints? It probably is, I couldn't be sure. It looks so good. Looking back now, I think, why didn't I take it seriously sooner than I did? It took five years between doing the first one to start to take it seriously. Anyway, I bought a digital camera, the first photographs were taken with someone else's camera, and I had Photoshop on my computer, and I found you could, you could enhance from using Photoshop. That is the same drawing. All I've done is I've increased the contrast and probably made it a bit less bright. And for a while it was the thing to do was to just get these and play around with Photoshop purely for my own entertainment. And I found three-dimensional effects. Again, oh, I'm pressing the wrong button by mistake. Completely accidental three-dimensional effects. Probably not too bad. Might have enough time to finish now if I skip those through. <laughs> that one holds the record.
for being one that survived for the shortest amount of time. I get asked a great deal, how do I feel when they get destroyed? The answer is, provided I've got the photographs, then it's job done. I've got somebody to show for it. I've got the photographs. That one was finished at about 20 to midnight. It had started snowing already by the time I finished it. Next morning, it had gone. Couldn't see it at all. OK, we weren't going to put these in. I do get annoyed when it gets destroyed before it's completed. This is a drawing done on a beach using a rake to rake the sand. It works because of the difference in tone between raked sand and unraked sand. Unraked sand, the surface is dry. Raked sand, the wet sand underneath has been brought back to the surface, and therefore it's a different shade. What's happened here is it started raining. The sand has stayed wet the whole day. So the work I've done on a bit where you can't see anything cannot be seen. There should be lines all over this bit. You can't see them. Again, here's another problem. When it doesn't snow enough, the old drawing is still visible when someone's come all the way from Japan to get me to do a new drawing for their television program. Not good for business. And in a, in a, long, in a long period of fine weather, drawings just accumulate, and more drawings, you get something like the Nazca lines. So I regard it as a film set. Once you've got the photographs, it's done its job. Who cares if it falls apart? Some of them have got messages. Protect our winters. USA, please ratify the Kyoto Accord. That's, that's sort of a protest message about the rainforest. The idea is to get people all over the world to make cross-sections of sawed-off trees. That's for world peace. That's a, a reproduction of the memorial to John Lennon, which is in Central Park in New York. Some are just for a bit of fun. Space Invaders. <laughs> That's a challenge for the future, try to get that to look realistic. And some are just done because it's such a fantastic location. I'd love to do one on this lake in the Dolomites. The question is figuring out how to get all the people and equipment up there without having to use horrible, noisy machinery like aircraft or snowmobiles. We're hoping to get all the people in Cortina and then as their dogs and we'll tie a weight of a kilogram or two onto everybody's dog and get the dogs to run up there is one of the suggestions. I come up with some fairly weird ideas. In fact, there's two lakes up there, which makes it even better. OK, that's a, that's a crop circle, which is done like a photograph, which was going to be cut. OK, that is a, a cartoon out of a magazine. You've got a, that's, I drew that angry farmer having a pot shot at some little green men who are flattening his crops down. <laughs> there we are. Leave my crops alone. Bit of a spoof, really. OK, you can do them as a skeleton. That's a skeleton. So we've got pencil drawing there, which is traced from a, a print of a photograph. And the green lines on it are going to be plotted out using compass bearings and pace countings, rather like an orienteering event. Do your green lines first. You've then got a lot of fixed points. And you can then join them up using eye and judgment to get a drawing of a ram's horn. That's a horn of a ram, which was done on a lake at Grindelwald as an icebreaker promotion. I haven't got a photograph of it. But the design is actually printed on the shirt I'm wearing. This is an icebreaker shirt which is being marketed for Simon Beck Range of Outdoor Clothing, or whatever it's called nowadays. And that's, that's printed on my shirt. So that was actually my first muddy deal, the icebreaker deal, which is a very significant point, because now I get some money for this. I can rationalize doing the surveying and plodding and plotting at the start, which is something I don't actually like doing fairly similar to my old job of surveying orienteering maps. It's, it's boring, it's a complete drag, has to be done with concentration and focus. Now I can rationalize doing something I don't like because I get some money for it. That's, what, that's been done with the skeleton method. Obviously, you can walk around this part and make tracks and do the measuring and then work out to the right. That's actually a logo for Summersby Cider. You can do it using a graph. It doesn't work very well in the snow because you're going to end up with lots and lots of unwanted tracks. So. If any of you want to have a go at doing it yourself, probably best to do a star. Work out from the center, survey a whole lot of points, join them up, and once you've joined up all the points in every combination, you can then shade these little segments alternately. And it's, it's quite easy to do. Of course, it takes it for granted that you can get the distance accurate. Use a measuring tape. Rope doesn't stretch too much or whatever if you do it yourself. And it takes for granted you can walk in a straight line, which takes practice quite a lot. So, 
just shade, just shade it in alternately, and you build up a very nice pattern. There's one in the snow. It's also got a fractal boundary added. That, that sort of complicated, frilly boundary was not on the sketch. But that takes me back to what Nicky said in the introduction, adding small parts together to get big parts. Right, that is something you can do very easily. Two lines at an angle, measure it equally, join them up, shade it, put six of those back to get, get a very nice star. Small parts adding up towards big parts. There's another one in the snow. Again, small parts added together to get big parts, get a triangle, go around the edge, add smaller triangles. Repeat it again with smaller triangles and more smaller triangles, you get a very nice design. I do like that lots of times in the snow. It's called a Koch curve. The first named fractal Swedish guy called von Koch named it, apparently. Another one, Sierpinski triangle. Sierpinski, Russian, Ukrainian, whatever. Get a triangle, <coughs> divide it up like this, and then you simply repeat that process. Repeat the process. This is a very good one to do by building up from the small units using a just copy and paste on a computer. A great thing to do as an after school activity with children. I recommend anyone who works with children to try this with children. Great fun. There's one in the snow. There's one on the beach. There's another one in the snow. Photoshopped a great deal, but it's, the photographing is just to reinterpret it to pretend you're looking down from above instead of looking sideways. It's just been squashed. It's not really been photoshopped, just to increase the contrast. Start with a circle. Instead of a triangle, you get that. You can do a, a polar version. Start with that, iterate it once, twice, three times, four times. Very nice drawing. Start with that, iterate it once, twice, three times. There's a couple I did on the beach. That's a Mandelbrot set, French map revision and Benoit Mandelbrot. Can't possibly explain how this is done, but very basically, you start with that and start sticking circles on it. Okay, add all the small parts together, you can get something really huge. That's my biggest ever in terms of the amount of time it took to take. That, that was, it wasn't quite finished at that point. When it was finished, that took four days, spread out over a week. Four eight-hour days. The whole of the area inside this fence is four and a half hectares. That is nine soccer fields, so it uses most of that area. And it's a combination of a Mandelbrot set, this sort of cardioid thing with circles around the edge, and, and Sierpinski triangles. Look at that red area. That is a Sierpinski triangle. So it's just shapes added together. Another, another way you can do it. Simple method iterate it once, twice, three times, etc. you get that. Anyone can do that. All you need is a string and an anchor, and, and knowing where to put the anchor, which again is a simple repeat it again and again and again. You've got to remember about you know, a few lines of code is all you have to remember, and you can do that. How is that done? Again, you just build it up one bit at a time. There you are. That's the biggest I ever did. That is the size of 11 soccer fields. One of the revelations has been how good the photographs of the half-finished thing look. It's half-finished there. Two hours before I finished it, it clouded over. That's the best picture I got. I was very disappointed with that. Okay. Avalanche, snow up there. That's why it's irregular. That bit wasn't safe to walk on. Things don't always work out exactly. There, there wasn't enough snow. That was done by shoveling snow off with a shovel rather than walking in it. You can't see where I've walked in it, but you can see where I shoveled off the snow. Made a very nice des design. Wasn't enough time. This is in the last hour before nightfall on the first day I got back after a visit to Britain. That was done. That went wrong because I had to wait until the film crew arrived before I could start. So it got finished at night. Never got finished, in fact. They wanted me to do that bit last, but it snowed and we never finished it. That's the sort of flagship crop circle. And you can see, if you look carefully, here and there, there are unwanted... Yeah, there's unwanted lines in it. That's my snow attempt to do it. And you can see some unwanted lines in it. You can see how it's been done. You make an arc of a circle. You then put smaller circles along the arc of a circle. So, of course, the original main arc can be seen when you don't want it. What happened after this? It snowed overnight and almost, but not completely, hid it. I was able to reinstate it from what I could see. So now you can't see the unwanted lines. 
And people look at this and they think, how on earth has it been done? Black magic, you can't see how it was done. And that's how it was done. It was done the conventional way that it then snowed, it was then reinstated. And there are people who find it difficult to believe how this can be done. And I am on a, work, or, or, I am on a website called Hoax Slayer. You can find me on Hoax Slayer. Quite a few people think, think it can't be done. That's how it is done. Okay, that was done to, to prevent the world ending in accordance with the Mayan calendar. 21st of December 2012, the world was meant to end. But we, we, did a, we did a Metatron cube on a flower of life. That saved the world. Enough people did that, so it saved the world. Okay, that's an extremely rude thing some teenagers did. Thank God it's a bad picture of it. That was changed to make that design, okay? So the rational half of that design was what was already on the snow done by somebody else. Sometimes you have to do that. You get a good site, someone does a doodle on it. You have to incorporate the doodle into a meaningful drawing, and that's how some of the designs get chosen. And then it snowed, it was then reinstated, and that's a sort of bonified version of it done by the ghost of the old one. <coughs> That, was, that, that came about because I, I walked off in the wrong direction. I was standing in the middle. For some reason, I thought, yeah, 340 degrees plus 60 must be 30 degrees, mustn't it? Went off in 30 degrees. Oh dear, something's wrong. Ah, oh, it should have been 40 degrees, shouldn't it? <laughs> so I got a wrong line. So the, the design was modified, so it looked like it was meant to be that way in the first place. It was meant to be a sort of fairly normal-looking snowflake. Again, they look, they look different from different directions. You can see how that looks completely different to that. This, this is where it's worked because the light is in the right direction. The light's not in the right direction there, so the effect hasn't worked. That's one drawing on top of another. Not entirely successful. So I waited for it to snow and then reinstated it. That looks better. Okay, just to wind up, the future... Well, the future, really, I'd like to get more people involved and do bigger drawings. Like I said at the start, I'm the biggest, beautiful man. I've just about reached the limit of what one person can do on his own. So this is a drawing we did on the beach quite recently, which we failed to finish. It wasn't the help of the fact the beach didn't dry up, but the helpers just got too tired and went home. And if you see what the middle is like, it should be all pyramids around here like the middle is. It would have been very good. And the whole of the, all these boundaries should be done in this fractal shape this process of sticking smaller triangles on top of bigger triangles. That's what I finished, but it would have been nice, instead of just four rings around the edge, to do ten rings, get a really gigantic lake. I'd love to have a hundred people on a really big lake and make a really big version of that one. That's a cathedral. It took four days, and of course, by the time it was finished, the snow was melting all the time. This was done in May, about three years ago, after a fantastic season. It was a Thanksgiving offering to God for the fantastic snow season we'd had a big cathedral. That covers an area of nine soccer fields. We've done over three or four days. Um, but it was melting all the time, so it wasn't a very good result. Again, ran out of time. Pity. Showed you that one before. You can see again, we ran out of time. That's not finished. And that's the last one. I did finish that one, but it would be nice to make a much bigger one and, and more complicated. So, yes, the drawings are big, they're good, they're very impressive, but really, being big is beautiful. I want to make even bigger ones. Okay. <laughs>